Hello everybody, my name is Anibal Tavares Azevedo. I am going to talk in this second video about some details that I told you uh, superficially in the first video. So if you didn't see the first video of this track, I'm going to show a card here in some place in this video, okay? And uh, just to, to remember, in the first video, we talk about artificial intelligence evolution can help solve the supply chain and logistic crisis so we give we get here on a kind of overview and here now i'm gonna talk more deeply in details about this uh article that i present uh, in this year on the implementation of simulation based on representation by rules methodology to plan port logistics operation. So the main issue here is about uh, how we can plan the operation of a port. Okay, we have many stacks here. We have stacks in the ship, in the yard of a port. We have different types of cargo. Here we have containers, but here we have some equipments and cars. We have a uh, train here. We have uh, also a rich stacker, we have a uh, quake crane, so we have different kinds of equipments that serve uh, the port to move cargo uh, through yard and through the container ship. How we can coordinate this oper the operations of many equipments in different spaces. So, uh, okay. So we can, we can imagine that we are using robots. Okay, robots is very good, but uh, we uh, the robots will do what we told uh, told it to do. So imagine that we have some uh, AGVs, autonomous uh, robots here. Uh, you can see that are a kind of truck without the trucker. And but okay, uh, uh, what is the origin? What is the destination of this robot? Okay. Also, we uh, mathematic mathematically. We have this uh, kind of uh, chain of mathematical problems. So uh, this is an important reference that uh, that said that many complex systems such as manufacturing supply chain and container terminals are too complex to model it analytically. So we can use discrete simulation and uh, to evaluate one solution. But we are interested not only on to the evaluation of one solution. We are trying to optimize the resources that we are using. So uh, the main task here is how we can integrate the simulation and the optimization. Okay, to minimize, for example, the time that some cargo will stay in the port. And uh, we're gonna talk in this video uh, the complexity about the storage planning problem. The storage planning problem is about the container ship, how to organize cargo in the container ship, and how we can operate uh, quake cranes. Quake cranes are big cranes that we use to move, to load or unload cargo in the container ship. So, to the first, let's uh, understand uh, how the container ship organize cargo. We can see base. So each layer here is a bay. And each bay has many uh, has some containers, and the color here indicates the destination, the port destination of of each container. So here we have many bays, and the bays uh, can be different in the format or in the organization of cargo. Okay. So we have also to to take care about stability. Stability of the container ship, stability of the cargo or the stacks can be. Uh, you can, you should think about this before load and get this kind of problem. Okay, so here is the mathematical model. I will not talk about in details of this mathematical model, but mathematical model is very important to see that if you are trying to 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 get the best solution of this problem how to organize containers inside the ship you have to uh, to minimize the number of movements you have to do the number of movements you have to load or to unload the ship you so you're gonna organize 
this using this model if you want the best solution. But we have some troubles here. I will not talk about, about the in details this uh, mathematical model. First, uh, we have to consider the, the minimization of no, number of movements. So if you have to move containers inside the ship to load or to unload, you have some uh, you have to take care about some aspects. And also we have to minimize uh, the, the instability of the ship or the instability of each stack. You can consider many types of uh, instabilities, okay? So that's not the problem. The problem uh, here is that this mathematical model uh, for a container ship, with our, uh, it's not much bigger container ship, but... Uh, you can see here the number of variables will be uh, very 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 large and the solvers that we have today is not uh, very good to do uh, with this large number of variables and constraints of this problem so uh, it's about 40 million binary variables it's a very very large problem mathematical problem and even with the best computers uh can cannot solve this in the optimality so what we proposed uh in 2014 we proposed here how we can solve this problem using this representation by, by rules that we're gonna talk and math meta risks okay so now imagine that we have this ship and we have to put cargo for example, you have uh, some containers which destinations port 4 and port 3. So when we uh, arrived at port 2, we're going to unload this container of uh, which destinations port 2. Okay. So uh, we're going to travel through ports and containers are loaded and containers are unloaded. Okay. But instead of using this mathematical uh, formulation, we can use a simplification, and this simplification is based on what? On what? Uh, first, you can organize cargo using what we call it loading rules. So, if you're gonna put some cargo in container ship, you can organize a container using columns by co by co per columns and per bay, okay? Or you can unload uh containers from container ship just moving the necessary or you can reorganize some base that are not very well organized for example we can uh, we can decide to remove all containers for this from this bay here because for example uh this uh, this stack's not well organized gonna get in trouble in the next port in port three for example since we are in port two and we are unloading containers with number two, which destination port two. Okay. So what's the main issue here? We can use these rules to organize in each port. We decide which rule will be applied, loading and loading rule, and we can simulate using these rules all the the container ship movements, all the the, the containers movements inside the container ship. So uh, we have here a picture. Imagine that we are in port two. We are leaving uh, just before leaving port two. We are we should remove uh, green containers and put some other containers. And these yellow containers will be removed. Uh, it will be unloaded from container ship, and we can put other kind of containers inside here. So uh, imagine that we perform this uh travel and after we can we simulated this travel we can see uh, the number of movements and the the stability measure for the ship and for the stacks for example for example okay what's what we should avoid we should avoid some situations for example here we are in this port free in this configuration uh this uh container ship has some yellow containers but this yellow container should be removed, but we also have to move the orange container because the orange container is blocking the movement of this yellow container. And we should uh, 
remove this orange container and then put it uh, loaded this again uh, to the container ship so each time we move a container we're gonna pay about uh, 200 dollars but this value is i believe that's underestimated because the prices are very 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 high at this moment in in supply chain logistics import logistics also we can't allow we cannot allow uh, some containers to float here you see that the orange container doesn't have uh, some yellow container here we can't allow this we cannot allow this and also we have to move these containers if you are trying to remove the yellow container you should remove at first this orange container and you should count this movement here we have some examples of the application of this me uh, method here we have some configurations uh, and we are trying to minimize the number of movements as you can see in the first port uh, we don't have a, a very good measure of stability because the cargo is all concentrated in this part of the ship it's not very good configuration in terms of stability but it it, it do, did well for uh, the number of movements okay we have a trade-off i'm gonna show it uh, later and here we have uh, uh, another kind of uh, extreme point here we try to minimize the instability measure but uh, as you can see here the measure of the number of movements increased about uh uh from uh seven to ten ten thousand okay that's not good and uh, what we gonna should do here and uh we should uh search for a trade-off between uh the alpha value and the beta value that we can change we can uh we can search for a better rule that uh, minimize both objective functions. Okay, so now what we're gonna do here? Uh, we're gonna do some remarks about the representation by rules advantages. First, we have a compact representation, as you, you saw. Instead of 40 million binary variables, we have a very compact representation. And also, we we ensure that all solutions produced are feasible in some uh, very complex systems it's a very very hard task to ensure this property the the solution that are proposed or is proposed is very very is feasible it's a, a great advantage in some some co complex context okay and also we can allow the decision maker knowledge for rules so uh, we can imagine that each decision maker have some uh, experience and we can, can use this experience as a rule uh, also uh, this is not the entire problem in fact we have to consider also the, the other equipments that uh, should be used to move containers through port so your true objective here is not just to minimize the number of movements the number of movements is important for the container ship owner but not for uh, the port because the port needs to 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 handle fastly the cargo and need to attend many other ships so we have to move fastly the the the, the cargo inside the port so we have to use these equipments and how we can coordinate the equipments and the plan or the storage plan uh, or the organization of cargo in the container ship also we have this storage layer we can imagine the problem that with two uh, layers first we have a given uh, storage planning from the ship and also we have to operate the crane so this uh, this layer will gonna be about the how to operate the quake crane also we have to couple these problems and see how much workload will be taken for the uh, quake crane to operate the quake crane here we have some articles talking about this and i have some uh, mathematical models and uh, here we have uh, an interesting picture 
uh, emphasizing that it's very important to keep a minimal distance between quake cranes, a security distance. And these quake cranes are very big cranes. They can cross each other because they are rail mounted. Okay, this is a rail here. And this crane cannot pass over past this other crane. Okay, so we also proposed, already proposed, how we can integrate this storage planning problem. We are trying to minimize the number of movements. We are trying to minimize the time using quake cranes to load or to unload the cargo from the container ship. Here, for example, we apply also this, uh, this concept of rule to how to locate quake cranes and how to move the quake cranes. Okay. I, I will not show in detail this simulation, but it's just to see, to, to show that if you are using some uh, rules, uh, maybe you, you should keep minimum distance. You should observe some uh, security distance. And this going to be a very, very interesting uh, task. But we will couple these rules with simulation also for quake cranes. And we can test many different rules uh, for quake, to operate quake cranes and see how much time we're going to take to operate quake cranes. So here we couple this, uh, these two problems, storage planning problem and the quake crane operation. And we get some interesting results here. Uh, what's the most interesting result here? That if you are applying some diff, uh, rules to organize cargo in the container ship, this will lead you to you in some different organization of cargo per bay. And this will take some different times to operate the quake cranes. Okay, here we are sh showing just the case, this alpha and beta parameters values, what happens. And what is interesting is that uh, imagine that you are just trying to minimize the number of movements. And if you take this solution and see what is the number of movements on the, the time to move these containers. This is not be uh, 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 the minimal uh, in terms of the minimal solution in terms of time to move containers. So minimize the number of movements is not equivalent, equivalent to minimize the time to operate or to load or to unload cargo from, from the container ship. So if you are trying to, to be fast, it's okay, but the, the container ship are trying to minimize the number of movements because each time you move a, con a container in a container ship, you should pay for it. So the ship owner will uh, try to minimize the number of movements and the port are trying to minimize uh, the time in the port and they have different objective functions. They are trying to do uh, things that gonna be uh, in terms of objective functions, very different. So uh, what is the, uh, the true contribution of this article? We already to told you about uh, past contributions and the contribution at, that I made this year in the, and I show, show it in, in the Congress is about uh, the representation by rules methodology. Because uh, we are just talking about ship and quake cranes, but we are not talking about other equi port equipments. So what is representation by rules methodology? It's just a general concept that we can apply for any equipment in the, contain in the container ship port. So let's see. In the first step we have the, to map, we have to map uh, the agents and their relations through the system process. Then we select agents that will be studied and the areas where they operate. Okay, so uh, we describe all possible agents operations to complete, to complete a process. For each operation, we describe the rules that should be or could be employed. And then we combine rules into a hybrid simulation based on discrete event simulation and agent simulation and finally we test a different combination of rules and identify the one 
that should be adopted considering the best performance of the overall system. So that is the uh, truly contribution after 13 years of study. Okay, so here we can imagine that we are trying to map uh, the, the, these two agents, the container ship and the quake grains. This is a simplified view of a container ship port, okay? So we have the import flow, we have the export flow, we have the transship or temporary flow, we have many kind of flows, we have many kind of equipments and interactions between these equipments and relations. Okay, we have the block, uh, yard block, we have the yard crane, and we can have uh, as much uh, equipments here as, as we can uh, deal uh, with them. And the second step, uh, since we selected the container ship and the quake crane, uh, we are trying to uh, describe the operation in terms, this is a kind of diagram that describes the arrival of ship, uh, the unload operation, and then uh, we sh should move quake cranes, avoid collision, and perform some of detail operations with quake cranes. And after finishing this, we should uh, operate the loading. We have some other movements here. We have to unload the, um, before to load. And finally, we uh, depart the, uh, the container ship, will depart the, the port. Okay, in the step three here, we have uh, we combined this, uh, we translate this uh, diagram into a uh, code. So here we have some uh, simulations, the unload simulation. We have the the operation of quake crane simulation in a very 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 simplified description, and also we have simulation for loading operations using rules, and also how we can move uh, quake cranes, the quake cranes here, to move uh, the cargo to load containers in the container ship. And finally, we get uh, the total time to move container ships. We also can get the num total number of movements, but it's not interesting, just, uh, this is just interesting, this measure is just interesting at this moment since we are trying to minimize it. And uh, finally, we can oper uh, use a, uh, a kind of compact representation. We can use, for example, unloading rules, retrieving rules, loading rules. We can use many kind of rules and combine this in just one number, in just one name, rule. So in each port, we have a chain of rules and we're gonna combine this chain of rules for one rule and after that, we're going to combine this rule of from one port with the rules of other ports. So we have a chain of rules in, in, in for our ports since we have a network of ports. And we're going to try different combinations and try to see what is the best performance to operate in many ports as we can. And finally, we, uh, after this, we can uh, combine this test these different combination of rules using a genetic algorithm. I will not detail what is a genetic algorithm, it just is a smart algorithm to try different combinations of rules, okay? And uh, this genetic algorithm will use a, a decoder to see what rule will be used or chain of rules will be used in each port, okay? And finally, this uh, decoder will see what in details what what is you will be used in each for each port in terms of rules for unloading rules or for loading rules or quake crane rules and finally we're gonna use a simulation algorithm to see in detail the number of movements or the total time to uh, to move the containers from the ship to the port or to the port to the ship uh, and we can see that this approach can be applied for other equipments, other parts of the port, other areas of the port, and and thank you for your attention. I believe that this video will be very, very big, very, very long, but I hope you find it useful and interesting. Also, in the next video, in the third video, I will talk how we can automatically generate these rules. Yeah, you can, uh, if you don't have time, 
to code these rules or to program these rules we have some situations that are already i already mapped that you can produce automatically uh, uh, many rules okay so i hope you to uh, to see the third video bye